Okay, one of the big differences between discrete and continuous random variables, discrete usually call, involves counting something. So like in the previous video, I was counting the number of heads that I can get every time I flip a coin three times. Um, sometimes when we're looking, measuring something, this is a continuous random variable. Okay, a continuous random variable takes on all values in an interval of numbers. For example, if I ask you to pick a random number between 0 and 1, there are an infinite amount of answers there. Because if you include every decimal number between 0 and 1, um, there's a lot of numbers there. Okay, and that's an example of a continuous random variable. Um, probability distribution of x is described by a density curve. A density curve is, an, uh, is a curve in which the area underneath that curve is equal to exactly 1. And we actually think of the normal curve as a density curve because we see that the area underneath that is one, basically all possible outcomes. Um, the probability model of a discrete random variable assigns a probability between zero and one to each value of x. A continuous random variable has infinitely many possible values. So that means that every individual probability actually has a uh, probability of zero. Um, you cannot find the probability of one possible in outcome because of the infinite nature of a continuous random variable. So the only way you can continue, you can measure probabilities is by looking at intervals. If I were looking at the numbers between 0 and 1, I could figure out what the probability of, of randomly picking number between 0.2 and 0.5 is, or between 0.4 and 0.9. Those um, I can calculate. I can figure out what the probability of getting a number within a range of values. So that's a big difference between a continuous random variable and discrete random variable. Um, a continuous random variable involves an interval or a range of values. A discrete random variable involves the particular outcomes, just a list of all the outcomes. So again, add these notes to your notes of this section. In particular is the continuous random variable here. So here's a visual representation of the example I've been giving. If I were to um, ask you to pick a number between 0 and 1 and use a spinner to actually spin that number, as you can see, there are an infinite amount of outcomes here. Um, that spinner can end up at any one of those spots. Any one of those spots is an, uh, one of an infinite amount of uh, different outcomes here. So once again, we can look at the area as being a range of values. So for example, in this first, first example, I'm looking at what is the probability of picking a number between 0 and 1 that's actually between 0.3 and 0.7. Well, the area of that region would be a uh, 0.4 because the difference between 0.3 and 0.7 is 0.4. So the area, assuming this is a density curve, an area of one, the probability of that picking a number between those two values would be 0.4. Okay. Um, another example would be well, what's the probability of getting picking a value either less than 0.5 or bigger than 0.8? And again, we're looking at the region here. This area would be 0.5. This area would be 0.2. And so if you add that together, the probability here would actually be 0 0.7. And the probability of the first one would be 0 0.4. So you can, again, you can look at ranges of values, but you can't look at individual values. So let's go back to the discrete um, random variable. And what's the possible outcomes for flipping four coins? Okay, so to get um, and x be the number of heads in each trial. So I'm going to flip four coins and I get x equals zero, meaning there's no heads. The only way I can do that is to have four tails. For x equals one, then I can have one head and three tails. And that head could be in any one of four spouts. So I could have three tails and one head in the second spot. Or I could have three tails and one head in the third spot. Or the final outcome would have three tails and then one head in the fourth spot. For x equals two now, there are um, um, even more opportunities now to get two tails and one head. So again, trying to be as organized as I can, I'm going to go two heads and two tails. Then heads, tails, heads, tails. Then... Tails, heads, tails, heads. And I'm not sure I'm being real organized here, but I'm just trying to list all the different ways of getting two heads here. And there are at least a couple more ways. Let's see, what am I missing here? Um, well, what about 
tails, heads, heads, tails, and heads, tails, tails, heads. Again, I'm not sure how organized that is, but you can see there's six different ways to get two tail, two heads, and basically two tails. To get three heads, this is kind of similar to getting three tails. I can get three heads and then one tail. And so there are four different ways because I can put that tail in any one of four different spots. And again, being organized here, I can make sure I get them all. If you notice here, being organized and moving the tail from one position to another. These are all the different ways of getting three heads. And then for getting four heads, there's only one way. I would get all four would be heads. So this is again a way to, to um, organize and count the number of heads if you flip a coin four times. So if I made a graph of this, um, you can kind of see, again, a, a normal distribution here. Um, the way of getting zero heads, remember, was a 1 out of 16. And then one head was 4 out of 16, and two heads was 6 out of 16, and three heads was 4 out of 16, and four heads was getting 1 out of 16. And I could describe the shape by cussing and BSing and saying um, it's approximately normal or uh, bell shape. The center is around two, no unusual features, and the range goes from zero to four, so it has a range of four. So I can describe all four par parts of this um, graph and being specific again. So that kind of gives you a feel for uh, continuous distribution that does involve looking at ranges of values. Okay.